So see, I've taken you into the, towards the upregulated thing. How does that feel? Were you ready to go there? Or, well, you actually, no, you're ready to go to sleep. Close, closer to sleep. Yeah. Tipping, yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting muddy, I was getting, my voice was getting muddy, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite delicious actually, that slide. I do find that slide really, I like to prolong that slide into, yeah. Yeah, I think we're in a, yeah, we know which side of the fence we like to fly on. Uh, anyway, line your tummy, <clears throat> please. We very rarely say please. I just felt obliged to say please then because I knew you were going to internally groan. And find a way that your nose is pointing down. So you could either have a little pad under your forehead or you could have your hands one on top of the other under your forehead. So we're quite geographically diverse and therefore linguistically diverse. How, what, what's the consensus, forehead or forehead? Forehead. Forehead. How many foreheads? Hands up. How many foreheads? Oh, the foreheads win. Do you wash your forehead with a flannel or a washer? Way. Okay. Uh, now, here's something interesting, which I can't remember Zoran said when I was having a snooze sometime. As you're lying on your stomach, you can feel the weight of you on the floor, right? You can feel, you know, you, there's not that many. The bones that push into the floor might be around your knees and elbows and stuff. And some people can feel the front of their pelvis is pushing in. Depends on how much you tilt. You might feel the pubic bone pushing in or ribs or something. So you can feel the weight of you like that. <coughs> um, <coughs> with your face parallel to the floor, can you feel the weight of your eyeballs in the sockets? So eyeballs have a weight. They have a mass. The biomechanist at work always goes mental because I use those words interchangeably and it's not correct. But I can't ever remember. Well, I can't be bothered remembering. So feel the, I think it's the mass actually of your eyeballs, but anyway. So actually, and if you can't, if you can't, could you pretend that you can? Because you could visualize, couldn't you, that you've got these, they sort of vaguely gelatinous balls you know, vaguely like a very soft boiled egg, if that doesn't freak you out. Um, ro roaming around in the orbital sockets, which are bony uh, caves, if you like, fairly, fairly spherical, not completely spherical, but somewhat. And that somehow or other, when you're lying on your front like this, the weight of your eyeballs causes them then that they will actually be more forward in the socket. So if you haven't noticed, uh, language for orienting you is relative to you individually. So forward in this instance, even though if, if we're using the, the, the room as a reference would be down, but you are the reference, so it's forward. We'll talk about more about this tomorrow. <clears throat> Sorry about the sniffs. And imagine that the, yes, your your eyeballs have this weight, and and let's say the pupil is sort of the slightly the heaviest bit, so that's hanging lowest, as it were. And I swing those pupils a little bit left and right, just like just that idea of the pendulum again, a little bit left, a little bit right, and it only takes a little nudge because it is that inertia and then gravity will pull them back to the middle and a little nudge to the left and they'll swing to the left and then they'll come back to the middle. You can really get this illusion that your eyes can swing gently with very little effort. There's no pulling and straining. Your eyes are shut so there's no busy business about looking and focusing. It's just this kind of swing. If your eyeballs could go wee, they actually would because they're just swinging like a kid on a swing. 
going up and down and up and down. But in this case, the up is left and right. <clears throat> then you could actually do up and down. So that's relative to you, up towards the top of the sockets and down towards the bottom of the sockets. So now the swing is swinging 90 degree, you gather, you know, this, the, the 90 degree shift. So you, again, your eyes are closed and you, it's just the weight of the eyes swinging up and down and up and down and up and down. And, up. and then it slowly, slowly gets smaller, smaller until they settle back into that equipoise kind of position, hanging straight down towards the floor, which relative to you is forward. You're finding that kind of middle, using gravity to help you find the middle. Okay. I can't tell you that you're doing it beautifully because I can't see. Roll over onto your back. And this time, have this conceit, which is a reality, that your eyeballs have weight, they have mass, and they're settling now. Gravity is pulling you into back of your so back of those sockets, so they're resting back. They sink back into the socket, and they quietly rest there. And keep your eyes closed. And the pupils are relatively forward, so they're not going to spin around and you know succumb to gravity. They're no, let's say they're no longer the heaviest part of the eye; they're the lightest, so they are the most forward, the closest to the ceiling. And now let the pupils swing a little bit left and right, and they come back to the middle, and then to the right, and then come back to the middle and left. And could it be this little kind of swing? Left and right, left and right. So it'll be a reverse pendulum. You're going to have to do some weird physics about that, Julie. Be like one of those, um, uh, my, the uh, boys had a, the little toy, it had the weight in the bottom of it, so you tap its head and it goes to the left and right, but then you can't get it to fall over because it's got such a weight in the bottom of it. You can imagine your eyeballs being like that. You tip them a little bit to the left and they bounce back to the right, back, back to the middle and then they go to the right and they have that little swing and they settle in the middle. So it's left and right, left and right, left and right. And then do the same thing up and down. With this idea that it's easy, and there's no strain, it just swings. And the moment of inertia that Zoran was talking about is small, so they do it easily. And how is it different, qualitatively different, to being on your tummy? Roll up to sitting and sit cross-legged. Lean on your hands somewhere behind you, gently. And let your head sink forward like it has been doing in the exercises you did yesterday and this morning. So you can find a place where your head could rest forward and in that position, feel the weight of your eyeballs in the socket. And where does gravity pull them now? It kind of depends how, how forward your head is. 
so some people's heads, you know, almost sort of the face is parallel to the floor. Others is at incline. So I, I can't tell you. You have to feel it. Where would gravity take your eyeballs, take the pupils? And now in this position, could you swing your eyeballs left and right? and then up and down. That same idea of using gravity and swinging. What speed are you going? Does the speed change in different positions? So for your eyeballs to really hang, your eyelids have to kind of let go a bit, don't they? So any tension around the eyes, the muscles of the eyelids and the muscles that really screw your eyes shut, so those ring muscles, they have to kind of let go so that the eyeballs can really sink forward in the sockets. They won't fall out because you keep your eyelids closed, but it's gentle. Leave that rest on your back for a moment. And without any instruction, what are your eyes doing? Spinning, resting. Where are they? Are they forward in your sockets? Are they, are they back in your sockets? Where's the pupil turned on either eye? Come back up to sitting, cross-legged, but not leaning on your hands now. And your face is uh, forward. So your head's erect. Now, firstly, with your eyes closed. You can feel the weight of your eyes, but it's, it's no big deal. It's just how it is. And set the eyes in motion going left and right. Eyes closed. Find some kind of rhythm. And then gradually, slowly turn up the dial so they go faster. How fast can you go before you really lose quality? So they start, you know, you start not being able to track them. And, and you're thinking, oh, maybe I haven't completed that full. Rotation left and right, left and right. Maybe the movement has to get a bit smaller, but it's still clear. You're clearly going left and right, left and right, left and right. Then slowly let them settle down to a stop. And then when they've come to a stop, Do the same thing but going up and down. So still with your eyelids closed, up and down. And what's this, how fast can you go going up and down before you start feeling a bit spastic? And I mean actually spastic physiologically, I'm not being uh, rude. So for most people, up and down is much slower than left and right. So is that true for you? 
kind of depends. Some people, it depends on what you practice. You know, you, what you gain is what you train, let's say. And then gradually bring them to a, to a standstill, as it were. And now open your eyes. And take your eyes left and right. And what difference does it make when you've got something to look at that's not the lids you know the inner lids of your eyes and how quickly can you take them left and right in this position how shifty can you be can you still keep your face eyes relatively relaxed and have that idea of just your eyes swinging And then slow them down. And if anybody's feeling nauseous, you just don't do it. And then the same thing, eyes open up and down. So I'd imagine that if you, who reads Chinese, that's up and down. We could have an experiment, see if people who can read Chinese up and down are just as good at going up and down as they are left and right. Those of us who read horizontally. Hebrew is up and down too, isn't it? No? Oh, what else is up and down? Different direction. Mongolian. Is that in circles? In, is it up and down? In a yurt like that around it. No, it's easy. So you know these things influence us. So you're faster or slower with your eyes open? Slower? Faster? Yeah, it depends. There's not not a rule as far as I can think of, um, figure out about that. It's, kind of depends on how what you let the visual information do to your brain in a way. So at this time, so at the moment your nose is pointing directly towards the front of the room, so it's forward relative to you. Take it a little turn, so a few centimetres turn to the right. And in that position, do the left right business with your eyes if you do it closed let's just forget about the open for now it's open is slightly more likely to make you feel a bit nauseous not necessarily but keep your eyes closed just do a few times left and right and then up and down Does that make a difference with your head turn? Turn your head another little turn. A few more centimetres to the right so your nose goes a bit further to the, in the direction of the right shoulder. And keep, and then and do the left right business. And the up and down business. Is it harder to do with your face oriented this way or is it easier? It kind of depends on your uh, familiarity and which eye is your dominant eye. And one more turn so that your nose is kind of as far to the right as is comfortable and try it there.
come back to the middle and just rest for a moment. Rest your eyes, rest your everything. And that was a mini rest, so now you're going to do the same thing, but going little quarter turns to the left. So eyes closed, turn your nose a few centimetres to the left. And in that position, as fast as you can, left and right, with your eyes. And up and down. Turn your head a little more to the left, another few centimetres to the left, and left and right with your eyes as fast as you can. Up and down. And a full turn to the left. The full turn in that it's still comfortable. So you're not putting your neck under any strain. And left and right fast as you can with your eyes. And up and down. Come back to the middle. And we'll make this the last one. This is your sort of the final check-in for today, left and right with your head in the middle, eyes left and right, fast as you can. Has it changed? Now it might be getting fatigued because this is quite a um this is quite a workout for the little rectus muscles. That's what they are, the muscles that move the eye there, rectal muscles. not in any way attached to the jaw they are in some people <laughs> neurologically not <laughs> biomechanically not neurologically yes and up and down Rest on your back. Have a well-deserved rest. So this real focus on the movement of the eyes in this first week quite demanding right they're little tiny muscles and we're using them all the time but we use them so habitually what we almost never bring them to conscious control they entirely seem to move reflexively so it's not ref they don't it's not a reflex as such it's something we've learned to do and it's become extremely habitual Even what we, there was one reflex we call the vestibular ocular reflex is still trainable. And, and another thing that we thought was, a, was one of the pure reflexes, the startle reflex or the blink reflex. If something comes near your eyes and you blink, you can train to not do it. So my colleagues often use the blink reflex as sort of a, um, a bit of a biomarker for how aroused somebody is. And I don't mean sexually aroused, I just mean alert, aroused, so neurologically aroused. Um, and it's very variable in people, which isn't a surprise. But then when they were reading the literature, there are some, not surprisingly, Buddhist monks who can completely suppress their startle reflex. It's just not there. And it's not that they're staring, they're not prepared, 
they don't know the experiment they just it just it can it cannot be there whereas for us you know if we wanted to suppress us if we thought someone was going to poke it poke us in the eye we could stare really hard and try and suppress the startle reflex by doing something ten tensiony but it would still happen so that's and that's relatively new uh, relatively new finding that even you know so these what were thought of as you know indisputably uh, permanently wired in things are still trainable i.e still can be learnt and unlearned there's still a learning element for them extraordinary the brain is extraordinary absolutely extraordinary well the human beings around the brain are extraordinary so with your extraordinary brains uh slowly come up to sitting and well, actually no lie back down again let's do this uh with a uh, with a, with a bit of in, uh, eye business happening could you be really aware of the movements of your eyes as you roll over and come up to sitting? But make that your focus of attention. Where do they go in terms of within, within your sockets? At any point in time, if I said, where's your eyeballs? You'd go, oh yeah, they're here. Well, you know, you know they're always in your socket, but where are they pointing? And then as you're looking around, as you stand up, as you're looking around, can you feel the movements? Can you pay attention? Can you be sensitive to the movements of your eyes? So often we only feel the movements of our eyes when we're really tired. That's my, I don't drink a great, well, I, I drink alcohol. I don't drink big quantities of alcohol. But the first thing I know after a glass of red is I, can, I start to feel the movements of my eyes more clearly. So for me, it's a sort of, I don't know what alcohol does. Well, I do know what alcohol does, uh, actually. But it goes to my eyes in that sense. I can, my eyes, I become very aware of my eyes moving. My eyes move a lot, as you probably noticed. So can you be aware of your eyes moving? Oh, this, is a, this is a story, this will, well, it won't make you laugh. I am... Um, I came in the back door of my house one day when we still had the TV downstairs and I put the TV on as I walked past and this person was on the TV and she was talking and her eyes were roving all over the place and I was going, oh my God, who, you know, what? she's a bit neurotic. Guess who it was? It was me. <laughs> <laughs> I, that, I didn't recognise myself and my first thing was judgment and gee, she's a bit neurotic. Look at the way her eyes are spinning around because I was talking, I, was, I can't remember what I was talking about. And I didn't, I mean, I didn't know I was going to be, I wasn't, I didn't put the TV on to watch myself either. So I wasn't, I wasn't even in my mind, as it were, to think it was hilarious. It was hilarious to judge yourself without knowing that it was yourself. It's really funny. Really funny. It was my honest judgment of myself. <laughs> that doesn't happen very often. Anyway, so my eyeballs move a lot, as you probably noticed. Um, okay. Eyeballs okay? All in your head? No one feels like they're on stalks. Anyone overdone it, eyeball-wise? Don't. Inside. You feel like your eyeballs are inside. Strained. Yeah. Yeah, well, these are muscles, you know, um, and we forget that they're muscles, but they are, they're muscles that can be uh, strained or not strained. The ones that actually roll the eyes left and right and up and down, and then there's other eyes that sort of uh, other other muscles that kind of spin them, and then there's the ones that make them go out and in, so to, you know, sort of converge and diverge as well. So there's a lot of muscles in the eyes, um, you know, and that's why there's behavioural optometrists to kind of exercise them. Yes, yeah. As, as fluid as any other muscle, yeah. 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 Yeah, and interestingly, they, the eye muscles are more likely to jump because we've trained them to jump. We've trained them to have what's called saccades, which is we jump from... So as I'm looking around the room, I've trained my eye to look at Jane and then I look at Loretta and then I look at Quan. So I've trained them to jump because 
what I don't want to do is if I really scan the room and see everything in between Jane and Loretta, that's a bit of a waste of neurological firepower. So I've, we actually train our eyes to jump. That's why they're so good at it. It's a tendency. It's a tendency that we want to follow movement, but it's trainable. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's a tendency rather than a reflex. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and that's why you like watching tennis. Why some of you do. I don't know why I don't. I just don't have that gene. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Really, yeah. Yeah, so the eyes are very, very intimately connected with the proprioceptors of the neck. I mean, they're all connected, but they're very, very intimately connected with the proprioceptors of the neck. So you start dicking around with the eyes and you start dicking around with the neck proprioceptors. And then, of course, the vestibular, which we'll tackle tomorrow. Yeah, so that's the treat for tomorrow. Perhaps don't have a big breakfast. Nah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. So when you go walking now, just really, really see how much you can be in your eyeballs. Sorry, did I cut you off? Did you have a question? Did you? 